Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today, Michael's out just getting ready for Super Doug. This is going to be a lot of fun today. Hold on. Let me go through the stories for today. Trump vows day one executive order targeting offshore wind. Holy smokes. Here's the next one coming around the corner. New Bloomberg study warns of $150 oil. You know, who knows where oil is going these days? Let's take a look at profits over ESG as super major pivot back to their core business. There's a lot to this story. Suez Canal sees significant decrease in shipping traffic. I'll tell you what, this is amazing. And coming right around the corner, never fails when we get a story from California. California gas regulators ensure prices might never go down with hidden 50 cent annual tax increase. You can't buy this kind of fun from California. So let's go ahead and get started here. But I'll tell you what, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that is following the show, giving us feedback, writing questions, and I, I, we just appreciate everybody that is contributing and sharing the word. You like the story, share it. Let's get ready to rumble. Trump vows day one executive order targeting offshore wind. There's a couple of really big hidden nuggets in this story. We are going to make sure, this is a quote, uh, we're going to make sure that uh, day that ends on day one. I'm going to write it out in an executive order, said Trump, on his uh, trip to uh, Wildwood, New Jersey on Saturday. Uh, he has, uh, the, he wasn't specific. A president could uh, impact the executive order with a fresh study uh, the offshore wind farm and the uh, the whales went crazy when they heard this. Do you know that the right whales are approaching endangered um, a species? But yet the uh, developers have gone out and they have applied for more tags, knowing that they're going to kill more than the actual species has left alive. They, they are endangered. Where is the outcry? Good for President Trump on uh, saying that he is going to stop offshore wind farms. Hey, if the, it can be done without harming the whales, let's talk about it. Let's make it fiscally responsible. Let's talk about it. But I'll tell you what. It is not fiscally responsible, and the birds, and the eagles, and the bats in the wind. I am not a wind farm kind of fan. Good for President Trump. But I want a question here. What is going to be the backlash? Is this going to be now a calling card for the Democrat Party to say he is anti-renewable energy? And that this is going to be a major uh, issue that he's going to do this from day one. A, I agree with it. But B, is this going to be a calling card for the Democrat Party saying, hey, we're going to try to do this. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. It's very important. And if you are an environmentalist, you need to really pay attention and learn the facts on offshore wind. I'm all about getting the lowest kilowatt per hour to everyone on the planet and not killing the eagles, birds, whales. So let's uh, go on to the next story here, as Michael would say. New Bloomberg study warns of $150 oil. I don't know that that is actually going to happen, but let me read you some of this. Uh, Ziad Dow, chief emerging market uh, economist at BE and co-author of the report, said a risk scenario involving a prolonged conflict could result in global recession that takes about one trillion off of global GDP with surging oil prices and plummeting, plummeting sentiment. Uh, sentiment 
dropping down to 1.7%. Wow. Outside of the financial crisis and pandemic, that would be the worst growth for world economy since 1982. This article also comes down and, and goes in and says that if there are continued geopolitical uh, conflicts, that the Biden administration may have to tap into the SBR again. Mm, it's going to be very tough if they do. Uh, but oil tanker shipments continue to be rerouted away from the Red Sea as impact on energy trade flows and threat to broader conflict in the Middle East. And it's a premium that Michael and I have talked about that is already baked into there. I don't know where they're coming with it with that $150 oil unless a nuke goes off, but then demand is going to come, come off. So uh, I don't see where it's coming on that uh, as, uh, as well right now. So let's go over to profits over ESG is super major pivot back to their core business. There's three main bullet points out of this article. Three years ago, big oil super majors in Europe were all about the energy transition and pivoting from their core business to greater diversification. I'm going to cover that point here in just a sec. In its latest financial report for the first quarter, BP indicated it might not stick to a plan to reduce its oil and gas production by a quarter to 2 million barrels of oil equivalent today by 2030. Oops. Europe's big oil majors are reversing the course from three years ago because they have some catching up to do with their U.S. peers. This is extremely important from the standpoint that ESG did do a great thing for the oil companies. They did start over the years paying attention to governance. And the governance aspect, they really started giving money back to the investors. It was a well done thing. They also started cleaning up their act on flaring and everything else. So the ESG, I am all in favor of when that's not greenwashing and they're not uh, just going out saying, we're going to do this to be green. Let's take Total Energies, as we call it on the show. They went out and now that they're owner in significant natural gas plants in Texas, they've also been buying other uh, U.S. energy, oil and gas uh, energy opportunities. BP is now backtracking and migrating away from uh, the renewable space. So when you sit back and say they're going back to their core business, I applaud them. They are going back and they're just not going back to the willy-nilly drilling programs and they are trying to do it um, yeah, more effectively and still holding their guns. BP uh, reported a drop in net profits for the first quarter because they're lower natural gas prices but kept its share buyback plan unchanged at 3.5 billion worth of stock to be bought back over the first half of the year. That is incredibly strong for not only the investors, but for the health of the company. Uh, this is our 10th quarter in a row. This is a quote uh, that we've been buying back 3 billion uh, plus of our shares. This is about a steady ability to be able to do this over multiple quarters and it's not that we want to be buying back at $90 or $85. We need to be thinking about how we're buying back shares at $50 oil. That, to me, is extremely important because the CEOs of the oil companies heard the ESG investing crowd loudly, and they have answered. Uh, I think it is wonderful. In this article, they also mentioned Total Energies. And they say uh, it's keeping its budget from transitional related investments unchanged. Shell revised its me uh, medium term target from 23 of total investments to 19. BP is deliberately being ambivalent, meaning they're trying to play a little bit of their cards uh, closer to their, their chest. And uh, they've got a lot of catching up to do with Exxon and Chevron. So um, 
pretty cool. Uh, hats off to them. And again, there is a lot to be said for the ESG taking care of the environment. Let's produce the lowest kilowatt per hour with the least amount of impact on the environment. Let's look at all of the data sources. Following along with this story, we have the Suez Canal sees significant decrease in shipping traffic. I'll tell you, this is critical from the standpoint that you really are, um, the terrorists are really taking a look at expanding their uh, missiles and their strikes out even further. This in itself could have more of an impact on that $100 oil than anything else. By going out and reaching out and touching shipping, it could impact all of the other tankers and everything else. The LNG shipments coming around the Cape, uh, the LNG shipments coming around the world has caused some serious um, issues as well. And in this article, it talks about the increase of prices to uh, LNG to the Europeans. Consumers are going to be paying for that. In our last article today, California gas regulators ensure prices might never go down with hidden 50 cent annual tax increase. This to me drives me absolutely nuts. Here's the first paragraph out of this article. A little known longstanding fossil fuel reduction program that was put in place by the California Air Resources Board, known as the CARB, could well lead to 50 cent per gallon cost increase for gasoline and diesel sold in the state. The report released in September by the state's environmental regulator body said that California may see the increase of 50 cents per gallon as early as next year and every year thereafter. The program's fee is in addition to the gas tax increases already put in, in place by Senate Bill 1 of 2017. This is pathetic. Um, gas prices in California in the last five years have grown to the highest level seen in the history of the state. If there are, Governor Newsom, if you're listening to this podcast, I would love to interview you and your administration on your energy policies. I want to know what you're thinking. Why is it that you're going to be burying this in here when you're forcing the world to go to the California world in order to go to California to electric your grid can't handle it. The amount of pollution from the tires uh, are more harmful from the EVs than they are on an ice. I want to know what you're thinking on why you're going to be doing this. There's going to be some more tax problems for California coming up, and it all revolves around the missing tax revenue that they're that if they start selling more EVs, you're going to have no more revenue coming in and it's not going to have the roads and the EVs weigh a lot more than an ice car and the damage is going to be more. And then you're going to, I mean, the snowball is horrific. Anyway, uh, the offer is there. If you are a industry expert, if you know anything in California, reach out to me. I want to visit with you. Today, I am visiting with several other very, uh, very important folks, and I am just really excited. Uh, we have Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Victoria Spies, and she is, uh, we're gonna be live on LinkedIn today. This is very exciting. Also, I have several other key legislators uh, in the U.S. Senate 
uh, getting lined up. So I am very excited about some uh, very uh, high-end folks that are lining up and uh, we're signing up for interviews on the podcast. For me, uh, Michael Tanner and The Daily Show and the whole team, uh, thank you very much. Subscribe, like, share, tell your brothers, tell your uh, cat, tell your dog, and uh, have an absolutely wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.